Okay, just briefly, I want to talk about shot placement. And the shot placement is probably talked about almost as much as a rut. Maybe not quite that much, but it's vitally important that we shoot a deer in the correct locations where we can get that quick and humane hit. And, you know, we've gone from shooting our field tips on bag type targets to now we're shooting our broadheads at a 3D target to get that more realistic shot feel and understand the anatomy of a deer so we know where to hit the bottles at. But inevitably, when we're in the woods, whether we're in a tree stand, whether we're on the ground, and we get a shot at a buck, it's usually not the same. All right, so we're moving away from the bag target. We're on a 3D target. We've been practicing all summer. We're ready for the hunt. Deer season is opening up all over the United States right now, and the moment of truth arises, and we need to know where to shoot a deer, okay? But you need to ask yourself a question. What is the number one goal of all archers? And if you say recovery, you're only partially right. It's not just a recovery, it's a quick recovery. The last thing you want is to be uh, trailing the deer for three, four, five hours or a day because of a marginal hit. We want to make a quick, humane, lethal hit on a deer and put it down quick, okay? So when you look at the deer and you look at the deer's vitals, you look at the, talking about the, the spine, the brain, major arteries, the heart, lungs, liver, all those are different areas on the deer. But for a, a whitetail deer hunter and you're using archery, uh, archery equipment, the best place to shoot a, shoot a deer, I believe, and this is just my experience. I'm just showing, sharing with what, what I have seen over the past and field dressing deer, understanding where the heart and the lungs is. And just remember, you can make a double lung shot and not make a heart shot. You can't make a heart shot without hitting at least one of the lungs, if not both of the lungs, okay? Because the heart lies in between the two lungs on the deer. Now do some study and do some research, educate yourself, become more knowledgeable on a white-tailed deer's anatomy. The thing I like about the lungs versus the heart, and you know, the heart sits low in the chest cavity, okay? And it's about the size of a tennis ball, maybe a little bit larger. So it's sitting two to three inches above the brisket, low in the chest cavity, and you got lungs on either side of it, okay? So the lungs are covering the heart and the heart's sitting in between it. There's only one heart. There's two lungs, okay? So two vital spots, two vital organs that you can hit. So it's two to one in favor of the lungs there. And then if you look at the size of the heart compared to the lungs, the lungs are much larger, probably three times as large as the heart, especially if they're inflated. If they're not inflated, you know, it might be just a little smaller. So they're larger, there's two of them. Another thing too is you've got the humerus bone that goes up like this and the scapula comes back, you know, it makes that V in here, something like this. You want to stay away from those bones with an arrow, you know, and I'm not going to talk about broadheads because there's some broadhead combinations when you get a 500 plus grain arrow with a, a good broadhead that you can go through that. And I've actually shot through both shoulders before, but it's not something you want to do all the time, okay? So shooting, the lungs gets you away from the humerus and the scapula, okay, and puts you into an area where it will give you a quick and humane shot. You know, the, the size of the lungs themselves gives you a higher probability as a bow hunter of making a lethal hit, okay. You got to understand where they're at. I always divide a deer into thirds. You got the first, the middle, and the last third, okay. We're only focused on this middle third of the deer and just narrow it down to the lung area. Now, you know, if, if you're a professional shooter and you don't get rattled in a tree stand and there's no limbs and those leaves and the deer stands perfectly still and doesn't move, you can aim for that every time if you want. But just remember, if you aim three inches low, you're gonna hit the brisket and not do anything. And a few inches high, you may hit the scapula, okay? Because the deer may do something. That, that's why we, as deer hunters, We've got to be conscious on how far that deer is, you know, 30 yards or less for me. You know, especially if the deer's on alert. You know, ideally, you don't want to shoot, shoot a deer on alert because speed of sound is much faster than your arrow. So that deer's going to hear it, you know, speed of sound will take it 767 miles per hour, so it's moving probably four times faster than your arrow speed, and that's why that deer can react. He's not reacting to the, the movement of the, the bow, he's reacting to the sound. 
but if the deer stands still, 30 yards or less, I like to aim for the back. You know, go up the back part of this leg, right here, center line, your deer, and that's where I like to aim. That gets me away from this scapula here, and away from this. And if I'm a little further back, then I'm getting, I'm still getting lungs, okay? If I'm a little low, I've got lungs. If I'm a little high, I've got lungs. And you know, you've got the spine that runs here. The spine is not at the very top of the back. I shot a deer two years ago. That deer survived. And the reason I know that was my deer is because it was an eight point. And when I shot him, I shot him down this way. So the arrow missed his spine. And the way the angle was, it went into his hip. And when I field dressed that deer this year, because I, I harvested him, my arrow was still lodged into his hip. So the, the spine does not run at the very top. Actually, the spine and the lungs are together. If the lungs are inflated, they actually can cover the spinal area, and there's really no dead zone in there. But looking at the lungs, the lungs is the biggest target, vital target on the deer. The heart is small and it can be protected by the humerus bone and the scapula bone here if you move just a few inches away from it you don't have to worry about a glancing shot okay the other thing i like about this shot is is you're, you're going through ribs nine times out of ten when you do take this shot if the deer's broadside now obviously you got to be concerned with angle if the deer's quartering to you quartering away always remember to draw that hidden line through the deer on where your exit hole is going to be Okay, because you can't shoot a deer here if he's quartering to you. You're going to have to pull that arrow impact all the way up here. And that's where we start getting into arrow setups, broadhead setups, okay? But nine times out of ten, you're going to blow through those ribs, and you're going to get a uh, blood trail that's much better because since the arrow's going through, you're going to have two holes. Complete pass through, the deer's going to be bleeding on both sides. If your arrow stays in the deer, then the tissue will adhere to the arrow. So the arrow is basically plugging the hole and preventing the blood from coming out. And we, we want that easy blood trail. Like I said, the goal is not a recovery. The goal is to make a quick recovery. So a double lung will pass through the ribs, the arrow will go completely out, and you're gonna have a really good blood trail. And the last thing, I don't know if you're concerned about this, yeah, you can think about it, but a lot of deer that I've shot, when I've shot through both lungs and it's went through the ribs, a lot of times my veins are undamaged. May have a few scratches on the arrow. Replace the broad head when you were using I've shot deer with the same arrow two or three times. Okay. So you shoot a deer in the shoulder, here usually your arrow's gonna get broken. If it goes through and lodges in the other shoulder. So real quick just to summarize. The lungs, there's two of them. There's only one heart. Shooting just an inch or so back instead of shooting you know, the center line here, move and go to the center line like this. Get you further back away from the scapula, so it gets us away from the bones here that can deflect the arrow. The lungs are larger, so you can get pumped up with the adrenaline rush and you're off just a little bit. There's more margin of error there, okay? Gives us a pass through. So we're blowing through the rib cage, really good blood trail. And like I said, a lot of times you can reuse that arrow and uh, harvest another buck. So a double lung will put the deer on the DL. I'm not, ta I'm not talking about the disabled list, I'm talking about the dead list. And the goal is for a quick recovery, not just a recovery. We want a quick recovery and the only way we're going to get that is with an accurate and precise hit in the vitals. And that gives us a humane harvest on this deer. Now we can talk about accurate and precise just real quick. Accurate means that your bow or your rifle can hit the same spot every time. But if you're aiming for the heart and I'm hitting here, it means you're not precise. Accurate and precise means that your gun or your arrow is hitting where you're aiming every time. Like I said, I know deer season is opening up all around. Our deer, our deer season is coming up shortly. Stay focused. 
don't shoot the whole deer. Here's another tip. I made that mistake. You're not. Uh, I'm kind of self-taught on deer hunting. It took me a long time to harvest my first deer. Okay, no one taught me, and I was shooting the entire the entire deer. When I drew back and put my pen out there, I was shooting the entire deer. Pick a spot. Aim small, miss small. Pick a spot on the deer in the vitals where I was showing you just a minute ago for that double lung hit so you can blow through those rib cages. Get that pass through, really good blood trail, and make sure you hold on the deer to your arrow makes contact. Okay? So double lung will put your deer down. See you next time.